Things that are sent to try us. I should say we've locked out the cleaner. Yeah, <laughs> we thought it was an elephant, but it's actually the Uber going. Yeah, sure. All right, okay, yes. Who is? Are you ready? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Liz Eden, and this is Peter Hamilton, not Peter Brook, as you might see on your screen. Um, and we're both from Sarah Mori and Tyrion Club. This presentation is one club solution to increasing the number of juniors coming into their club, plus hopefully more adults. And we're going to tell you how and why we did it, show you a few pictures, and then Phil Conway is going to talk with Polly Jacobs, one of our parents. We will then take questions and answers. Okay, right. How and why we did it. Early, Early in 2017, uh, we identified a need to recruit more children and young families um, to improve the club membership age profile. We used to have a very good junior section, but they've all grown up now, so we were left with a void. We've had many training evenings and Saturday programs after the past, over the last five or six years, and they failed to attract and retain the, the target group. We have people attending these events, but um, they didn't move on to join the club. Our schools program, which we've been doing now for about eight years, with all the local schools taking them into um, the forests and so forth, have not really led to recruitment overall, although you'll hear slightly different in just a minute. We were very well known to the schools and to the local council, who were very pleased with what we were doing with young people. Um, but again, there was little movement into events or into the club. Those who did come into events and join British Orienteering didn't actually stay for more than a year. So what to do about it? We all had, we also had, because of um, the people who were doing all of this, we were getting volunteer fatigue, as I'm sure many clubs had. We were aware that other clubs, such as Guildford and South Yorkshire, had successfully grown a junior section. Important because one is a large club and one is a smaller club. We were advised of the importance of holding regular sessions, which suited um, busy family schedules. Um, and we decided we would have a weekly club. We were advised that that would work, because that, in fact, is what Guildford had been doing. We decided that the um, time between five and six was probably an ideal time, having talked to one or two parents, because it, it fits in with um, after school, before people have tea, um, and, and fitted in well with that. We found, um, and uh, how to deal with this because of the volunteer fatigue, we found an outside volunteer coach to help deliver an after school programme based on Guildford's experience as a similar small club. Guildford is a small city, just as Thornsbury is, and with outlying villages for their clientele. Um, South Yorkshire, our other uh, advisee, is about quite a large club, but with a city to call on. Um, our, our key was also to try and involve the parents. Um, in order to do all of this, we had to acquire funds because the, the club could not uh, deal with it all itself to cover coaching equipment, coaching equipment and pro promotion costs. I'll pass over to Peter to tell you a bit about that. Yes, as Liz said, we realised that the project, as um, you were building it up, would incur significant costs that were above what were budgeted for in the club finances, um, things like leaders' costs, additional equipment, etc. And so we looked to see how we might get some external support. 
Now, um, we had previous experience of um, getting grants from organisations such as Sport England and uh, our, some of our local councils. And thinking about it, the Small England, uh, Sport England, sorry, Small Grant Scheme was a good fit for us. And so that's the route we went down. An important thing to remember when you're doing this, if you go ahead with this kind of route, is to allow yourself plenty of time to, pre to prepare a good case. If you rush it, you may not get the money. So the first thing to do is to check whether what you have in mind is actually aligned with Sport England's requirements. Um, if you go online to Sport England and look under their small grant scheme, they have a very helpful online checklist. And if you tick all the boxes there, then there's a very good chance that the project you have in mind is within their scope. But I've always found that it's well worth at that point ringing up Sport England, talking to somebody. They're very helpful. They're very happy to talk through your ideas and to suggest where things might uh, be out of line with what they want. Get that right and you won't have the, any problems later on. The next thing is to bring your project team together and no one person can do this. Uh, you need to then build up a picture in considerable detail of what the project is going to look like. So in our case, for example, we thought about the number and the frequency of our five o'clock sessions. What sort of content would be going into these sessions? What equipment would we need? And how much of various people's time would be needed? Um, and then very importantly, how were we going to promote this to our various target groups? It's also important, I think, when you're thinking about defining the project to give people specific roles. So in our case, we identified who the main leader, the main coach of the sessions was going to be. We actually had a project manager, which was actually was myself. This is somebody who overlooked the project as it was going on to make sure we were still in line with what we promised to deliver to Sport England. <coughs> the other things we need to think about were coaches, volunteers, and Last but not least, a report writer, because somebody has to, at the end of all this, write a, quite a detailed account of what you achieved and submit that back to Sport England. The team then needs to sit down and talk about um, what money is going to be needed, what equipment do we need? For example, in our case, we needed to buy um, some new uh, electronic timing equipment. We needed to work out and cover the leader's costs. <coughs> um, costs of printing maps, for example. Don't forget, if you're, as we were, running over 36 different sessions, there were 36 different sets of maps, one for each child, that had to be printed. So that uh, does cost a bit of money. So all these kind of um, expensive items or low-cost items need to be added together uh, and, and put into a detailed budget. If you have got any other forms of um, financial support, then you can add those into the budget. Sporting is quite happy if somebody else is contributing money towards what it, what it is you want to do. But a very important thing to do is to calculate uh, put a value on all the in-kind contributions that are coming from the club. In our case, this was largely volunteers' time, a certain amount of uh, equipment such as uh, electronic controls, which we took from our, uh, our previous uh, equipment stock and ascribed to the, uh, the project. In the case of volunteers, um, what we did was we assumed that we would get perhaps four volunteers at each session, uh, that they might spend something like three or four hours of their time. So that would be 12 or 16 man hours. And we um, ascribed a, a worth of £10 an hour to that. Um, it's not a lot of money, and it isn't real money. But the point is that it puts a value on what the club is adding 
to any money that comes from uh, the grant awarding body. So we are showing how the club is adding value to the grant. Then you will need to explain how you're going to um, promote the, um, the exercise. You need to, uh, having got all that, to get on then with the go online and start uh, filling in the application, something which takes time. You need to give yourself, uh, I think, several weeks to prepare a really good uh, case for, um, for a Sport England grant bid. You need detailed information on why the project is needed, what its aims are, what your targets are, what your success metrics will be. In our case, this was largely to do with the numbers of new junior members and young families joining both the club and BOF. And with all that information, you can then start to complete the application online. It's a bit like doing a self-assessment a tax return if you've ever done that. You can go online, start writing something, go away and think about it, say what you've done, come back, review it, add to it, and so on. It's a very good system, and it does allow you to review everything carefully before you make your submission. It also gives somebody else a chance to comment on what's been written. And when all that lot is in place, just press the button, and away it goes. But then you need to remember that you have to allow Sport England two to three months to reach a decision. And they do specify that you can't uh, start any expenditure before the grant has been approved. If the grant is approved, then there's a small um, administrative process whereby the club formally has to accept the grant and the monies are transferred into the club account. And then off you go and deliver the project keeping in mind that there is a final year-end report to be created, which is why, and I keep emphasizing this, it's terribly important to keep detailed records uh, to help compile that report with things like attendance, uh, recruitment numbers, expenditure, achievements, failures, and follow-on plans. Sport England usually take their time yet again to respond to the final report, and in the, in, in the case, they did have a query uh, on our report simply because uh, about half the attachments that were sent to them disappeared into the ether and we had to send them again. But in the end, there was no problem and they were very happy with what we'd achieved. So Liz. Okay, thank you very much, Peter. So now, how do we go about getting these, um, the youngsters and the families and so on? We had these school contacts, as I've mentioned before, so we um, spoke to um, the staff in the schools that we knew. We had flyers that we actually took to our forest meetings um, to hand out to the juniors. We did have a few juniors in the club and we got them to see if they could bring a friend um, in, the, um, in the different schools locally as a couple of schools particularly that have given us a lot of, of, the, of the juniors so that helped. Um, Phil and I went along to meet the local PE coordinators um, to explain what was going on and, and offered to help them with orienteering and one or two have taken us up on that so that they're beginning to get a picture um, of what we actually do and how we can help them as a follow-on within the club. Um, Peter did a lot of work with the local media, didn't you? Yes, we, we're, we're fortunate we have a very good uh, local newspaper, the Salisbury Journal, um, and um, a uh, FM, local FM station that were happy to carry uh, articles or information about the upcoming program. And we were also very fortunate. We have a, a professional photographer as a club member, and he would come along to each of the sessions and create quite comprehensive and really interesting photographic records of the, of the various sessions. And we made a point then of, of writing a report after every session, populating it with his images and putting it on our website. I think the children and the parents were delighted to see themselves in action on the Serum website. And we were very happy with the areas that we used. We decided that within the, the fact that we're trying to have an hour session, once a week, we didn't want to have um, a lot of travelling for the, um, the families. 
because there were actually other activities the, the children needed to go to, um, either before or after the, um, our sessions. And within Salisbury, we have a number of small parks and a few wooded areas that we were able to use. We're also very lucky that within, from our camp, local council, local Salisbury council, we um, have got no land charges. I know some people do, and I'm sorry, I'll have to work that out within the grant, but we are very lucky we've got no land charges. We produce risk assessments for all of the areas, um, and we actually ensured the whole thing through British orienteering through the activities um, on the website. Your fixture secretary could probably do that for you, just so that we're all covered with insurance. Um, the session plans were worked up by working with our volunteer coach and the volunteers that were that had agreed to help with all this. Coffee and cake were involved, I have to tell you. There's a place in Amesbury that we meet regularly. They know our coffee orders now, which is very nice. And we decided to base the whole thing on a cycle of orienteering technical training mixed with physical training, club evening and the club evening sessions with fun and games and an orienteering theme. The whole um, ethos throughout was to have fun so that the children enjoyed what they were doing. They weren't constantly repeating doing stuff. Um, and we took great care um, that, that they were learning something new each time, but we're doing it by, by play, if you like. Um, we also decided um, that we, we were running in, in term time um, weeks, but this all obviously led, led through to the winter months. And we decided to keep going um, uh, because we've got one or two places where we can hire some um, some space inside. There is a small cost with that, and again, that was covered by the grant. Um, learning about maps and doing puzzles and things, all sorts of things to get them used to orienteering. But actually, when it was dry, uh, we actually would go outside and orienteer in the dark, um, and the children absolutely lapped that up. They all had torches or head torches, and we used to have glow sticks on all the, um, on, on the controls. It was excellent. We've got some wonderful pictures of, of this new movement of light without knowing who any of the children are um, on our website. Yes, club shirts. Um, one of the things we, um, an idea we picked up from Guildford was to ask within the grant, we bid for some money for what we originally envisaged as printed, specially printed t-shirts. But as um, children came along to the evenings and they saw the, the volunteer coaches in their serum shirts, that's what they wanted. So in fact, we changed the plan and um, provided um, small sized serum shirts. Um, they just didn't get it automatically. Uh, but basically what we said to parents, although the whole program was free to the children, was that we, they were happy, we were happy for them to come along for three uh, sessions and then we would start leaning on them and try to persuade them to get involved more by joining the club and BOF. And if they did that, then their juniors would get club shirts. And in fact, that proved very successful. Uh, very little resistance to, to it, uh, a bit of inertia occasionally, but uh, on the whole, no problem. And for us, running a project, it was fantastic to see all these little sound shirts running around everywhere. Yeah, yeah. really, that was very successful and a key part, I think, of the, of the year. As I said before, it, it's very important to keep detailed records of every session. So we had a, a, a ledger, at least I had a ledger, in which I recorded the, the numbers of children attending, whether they were, you know, their ages, their gender. We recorded the volunteers' time, coaching costs, printing costs, room hire. We also recorded the involvement of the parents. Were they hanging around? Were they getting involved? Um, all, all this is useful information when you come to uh, write that final report. And, and actually, the other thing that was uh, really important was on the um, safeguarding and um, general care side, um, we had everybody sign um, a, a permissions form, giving us also information um, about 
about medical situations. The parent, we, we, we sort of insisted that the parents stayed. And in most cases, I would say 90, 95% of the parents stayed. One or two had to go because I had other children elsewhere. But the majority of parents have stayed. So in fact, the medical issues were covered by them. But nevertheless, it's helpful if we, we knew the issues as well, um, just from the side of care. We also got permission for photography because we were using the children's photos. But we wouldn't have done so if we hadn't had this permission. Um, used on the way the website and in the local media, and it's not been a problem at all. We also, um, the, the key workers have, have become um, DBS certified. Um, as I said before, risk assessments for each session, and also having sufficient people helping, both with the volunteers, the SEREM volunteers, but also using the parents. And moving on to the next point, just saying that the, the whole volunteer team has built up a camaraderie, which has helped because the children actually know who we are, particularly as we'll come on to the programme the second year. It's helpful that they know who we are because we can help with events in that way. We encourage the parents to be involved. They got involved with marshalling. Several of them know each other, so different children can be transported with different families because they all know each other from different different things. Um, and they all very soon started to help in joining the sessions. Just at this point, to say that the, the, the parents, the, the, the children seem to come from a whole range of activities outside, including running clubs, um, scouts and guides, local churches, and the local schools. So, and also some of them belong to the local music group in, um, in Salisbury. So all round, there has been connections and these are areas that other people could tap into. Um, not yourselves necessarily, but using the parents and saying other people within your group who might be interested. So what did we achieve? Well, um, we plan to deliver three terms of 12 after school sessions, that's 36 sessions. In the end, we managed 32, because holiday, um, bank holidays and things got in the way of some of them. Uh, but we also managed to fund uh, attendance at two local orienteering events. So we were very pleased with what we'd actually uh, um, been able to deliver to the children. Over the year, we had as many as 40 children take part. Thank God, never of them all at once. Um, and at the end of the year, we've recruited, or the club has grown by 12 new families with something in the order of 18 children. And these are our numbers that we've retained into the second year. As I said before, it's great when we go to events now, we see lots of small serum shirts running around everywhere. Um, a very satisfying uh, aspect to the project was the way the parents increasingly became involved actively, as, as Liz said, helping with marshalling, um, helping with the training and safeguarding, and even having a go themselves. So a, a lot of the parents are really enjoying their orienteering. So the project has gone beyond just children, but into the adults as well. And we now have devised and are uh, delivering a follow-on programme of training sessions at um, events. And at event support, it's being delivered. Right, what we've done for the second year, that was the first year, and we, we didn't carry on over the, over the summer holidays, but we started off again in September, and we actually spoke with the parents in the summer term, talking about what we were planning for the, for the second year, and they were in full, of, in full, of, in, um, very, full approval of what we decided to do. We decided to hold monthly training sessions, partly because we now didn't have our volunteer coach, we were back to where we were before, but now we had a bunch of youngsters and parents to work with. And we decided that what we would do with this was cover specific skills. So we, um, specific orienteering skills. Um, and we also decided that um, we would name a list in the programme we sent out, one or two local, low-key events each month from the local, other local clubs and from our own club, which coaches agreed to, agreed to attend to enthuse the shadow to coach. So we all go along to those um, to be there for when, they, um, when the parents come. Um, and we found that this also leaves the parents free to run because we've got a brilliant bunch of parents gradually working their way through the different colour programmes. Um, Holly herself has had some really great success with what she's been doing, as, uh, as you'll see. 
Um, we also decided that to increase camaraderie and group um, group participation, we would try and find events where um, where we could all go as a club with a, a club tent to um, take part. The first one we went to was actually the British School Score, which isn't listed here, but that was in October last year. And that was fun. We had about seven or eight of, of the youngsters and four or five parents came along too down at Morse Valley. And we took part in that, at all the serum shirts running around again. We took part in the Compass Sport Cup. Some of them will be a bit older and more proficient for the next one because Sarah has got through to the final and we fully intend to get youngsters coming to that. Um, Yvette Baker Trophy we took part in this year. We were missing um, entrance in the light green and green, but, but, but they performed well in the other ones, considering they've only been orienteering for a year and a half. They did extremely well. And just recently, this last weekend, we had um, a handful of, of juniors and parents taking part in the JK Relays which was a tremendous experience. So again, we're gradually involving the parents with the activity. When they're not running themselves, they, they also help them with marshalling, but also shadowing their youngsters as they learn more about orienteering. Um, and they're actually, some of them, quite a bit faster than some of us. Um, and this is also bringing in new families. We've had one or two coming along from um, scouting groups uh, recently and it's bringing some of the other parents in you know one parent will come along with the youngster but the other part of the partner has been coming along as well now and are taking part and one other one's just joined the club so it's just growing in, in that sense so just as just to sum up um, at this moment um, the things you need to consider are planning regular meetings with the programs is published simply and well in advance, like nearly a term in advance, so parents can add it to their calendars, because if you're in the calendar, they'll come. If you do it at the last minute, they're busy. Um, a team of club members and coaches to create familiarity and continuity to do with shadowing, briefing and debriefing on runs. We try to be there at the finish as well. Um, regular emails and reminders. The program is sent out, as I say, a term in advance, but everybody gets reminders in just at the end of the month before just to say this is coming up don't forget to come and so forth so that they don't they know we haven't forgotten either and planning the sessions again with coffee and cakes to with the coaching skills for continuing development has been amazing we're having to use our imagination the children are very sharp um they they can see through any ruses that we have for trying to um have a, have a simple course so we're having to second guess what, what they might do with the course and we're having to plan for the faster ones and the slower developments and what I would say is have enough maps that however many maps you have double it so that because once the session starts um, it's fast and furious the several are all sort of helping but it's fast and furious and they, they rush around faster than you expect and so you need to have another map so they can go out again not having to wait for somebody to come in so that's been key and as i've said before we actively encourage the parents to stay and be involved with the activities i'm sorry i've mentioned this before the marshalling collecting controls and shadowing and so forth and uh, we've got a really good core of parents helping us now Okay, so that's how we went about um, delivering our recruitment project. We'll now hand over to Phil Conway, who will be talking with one of our super mums, Polly. Uh, but before that, here's a short photo record of our year, as Liz said, very much a year of fun.
Good, so welcome back. Um, lovely shots there from great evening sessions for me, certainly um, here in Salisbury. So it's a delight to be back in, uh, back in Salisbury again. So I'm Phil Conway from British Orienteering, and I'd like to give a big welcome to Polly. Thank you. Polly Jacobs, um, now a busy mum, a member of, now member of Serum, and um, I think the idea is, Polly, that we, we chat about, you know, your whole experience with orienteering, with Serum. We'd love to hear about your family, love to hear about how these sessions went, what the children thought, and any other reflections that you might have about orienteering. So I guess, you know, uh, tell us, let's kick off by just tell us about your family and uh, who, are the, who are the children, how old are they? Uh, tell us how they're getting on. Yeah, no, for sure. So I am, I'm Polly, I'm a doctor, I'm married to another doctor, uh, and we have three children uh, aged 12, 11, those are two boys, and a seven year old girl. Um, and I think we first uh, came to the club because uh, Cameron, my eldest, loved running and He'd done one of the events that the local club had organised for his primary school um, and he absolutely loved it. And we contacted the club, I think, just at that point where they were just starting to begin about the, this programme. And it was just uh, at that point, there were very few juniors in the club. So um, just, um, yeah, in that time, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, was, it was Cameron, to be fair, my eldest, who, who incidentally has special needs, um, that, that really got us into Sarah in the first place. Okay, so Cameron's your eldest. Yeah. And who's the second? So Benjamin child? is my middle son, who is is actually turning out to be a really good orienteer. He's a good runner and he's very good at the map reading. He's a good good combination of skills there. Um, but they just love it. They love it. They love uh, they love coming to the training sessions. They love the events. Um, Great. So Cameron, Benjamin, and then the daughter, the, the youngest Alara, daughter yeah. is Alara. Yeah. Okay. Tell me about Alara. Uh, so again, I mean, all three of my children are really very sporty, very musical, very busy schedules. Um, but you know, like her brothers, she's just loving the orienteering. I think it's a bit like running with a treasure hunt. It's, um, you know, they, they love it. Mm -hmm. So I, I've, um, of course, a lot of memories of um, working with the children, but I'll share with you one little um, uh, memory I have with, of, of Alara, because um, Peter and Liz mentioned about club kits, and we yeah. do know that juniors from other clubs, they, they, they love the, the colour and the, the, the idea that they're belonging to, belonging to something, right? Well, it's not a year, it's sort of a uniform, I suppose, but it's, um, it's fun. And um, your children came along with their, their club kit, and Alara marched up to me and said, how proud I am with my club kit. Well, I wore it all last night for yeah. sleeping in the bed. It so, was her pyjamas that night. <laughs> yeah, I think probably had to be just soaked up in the morning for school as well. Um, no, it's been great. And I think as the others commented, it is an absolute joy to go to the events and just see the sea of blue shirts competing now it's and, and also in the parks and I think when we're in the parks and the woods having the training events and there may be other families enjoying the park and just incidentally seeing this sort of sea of blue shirts I think it's a it's quite eye-catching for them to see we well, you know what's going on what's that club it identifies it as an orienteering club and I'm sure that draws other people it really gives us a sense of team definitely of sense of team sense of belonging you know they put their shirts on for training they put their shirts on for the competitions and and, and I think I think they really feel that now. I mean, my children, they're the core group that have organised this junior club and taken it forward. Mm. You know, my children consider them absolute sort of extended family. And I think one of the key uh, factors for me at the events that makes it so successful is that I can go off on a course, my husband can come off a, go off on a course, they can go off on their three courses, mm. and I know that there's the Serum tent set up somewhere, okay. and that they have somewhere where they've got really well-known, familiar faces right. to come back to, and if I get lost or take a long time to come back, I'm not worrying about them, uh, you know, where they're going to be, I know that they're going to be in a place so of safety. This is, so this is a tent set up in the arena or an yeah. assembly area or whatever? That is a base for them, and it's that's a base important for them. For you. And I mean, I can't really thank the, the, 
there's a cool group of people with the, the junior club have been so generous with their time um, and frequently at these events they will all go their own runs to support the juniors perhaps getting them to sometimes there's two different starts depending on which color it is and they'll take a group of, uh, of the juniors to the start they might have another adult that will finish so that they've got a friendly face to finish they'll have people in the the, the, the base tent to go through their route what they did well what they could have done better um and for me i think a key part of the success because we we do a lot of things we're a really busy family but I think orienteering ticks so many boxes for us because it's not like, you know, if I go and watch my son swim, I mean, it's lovely watching him swim, don't get me wrong, mm. but there's no, um, that, you know, I'm not doing any exercise, I'm not getting to swim. Yeah. We go to an orienteering event, all five of us are physically pushing ourselves, yeah. all five of us are mentally pushing ourselves in terms of the map reading. We can all do a course that suits our ability we're getting to explore new That's parts nice, of the forest that we And I suppose, have. does it give you as a family something in common to talk about, like yeah. around the dinner table, or, or like, you know, how do you all get on? Together. It's a skill yeah. we've learned together. Um, I mean, we, my husband and I are really cool runners. Um, I mean, my husband's done, I guess, some of the bigger mountain marathon things, so I guess he had a little bit of knowledge about orienteering, but I mean, I've never seen an orienteering map, I didn't, uh, and I, you know, and I have been really enjoyed as a family, all of us have made a progression, I started shadowing the kids on whites and yellows and getting a vague idea of what I was doing and then took the brave step to mm. try an orange on my own and a couple of weeks ago I managed to do a brown and not hey, get lost, brown, so, no way. Okay. Um, so you know, I think it's going to be able to see uh, progress. progress and progress. Um, now, now uh, Peter and Liz talked about the program, they did they year one and yeah. they moved on to year two. And, you know, you were in it right from the beginning. Can you take us through a little bit what you remember from the very first, the first few exercises, what were we doing and what the children got out of that? I think, I mean, I think one of the key things that was successful was I think the people involved in running it were very keen to get my opinion and I'm sure other parents' opinions at the time and stuff, you know, where, what time, where do we need to be and to be able to say, look, we've got all these other things that we've got to fit around it and school pick up some different schools. So having things that were central to everybody and they totally listened to that in a time that suited people. So I think they made it as easy as possible for did us you, to access. Did you ever have a clash in the sense of, you know, oh my word, swimming is the same day. What should we do? Should we prioritize orienting or swimming? How did that juggling of a really busy, you know, family life work out for you? I think, I mean, I sometimes had to leave early for my son to get to swimming, but then yes. the other two children would stay and would be scooped up by another family. And I think that's the lovely thing now is that lots of my friends and their children who we already know are all Families are helping each other. And there's a lot of co-parenting which I think is <laughs> okay. it. But, yes. um, but no I think I think they chose the time and chose location for people and, and it's become a priority for us we mm. think then fit around orienteering because we want to we want to be there. Yeah now this was an after school sort of uh, mm. exercise wasn't it and, and as I recall was it, is it correct it started at five o'clock? Five to six. Five yeah. to six. So that worked for you as a worked family. Well. Yeah. What What did you do between that sort of you know three three thirty till four thirty time? Did you go home? Did home, you do else? fed children, probably okay. did some music practice, got them changed. Okay, and, and then bomb out the door yeah. again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And was something sometimes after or two as well? Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> so straight off to the swimming pool, yeah. maybe. Yeah. So you're really time slicing there, yeah. but it worked for you. So that timing as an after-school club worked, worked you know, really well. Five to six. Yeah. And I yeah. think I think any later than that, because there are is, is a, the other thing that I think was very successful about the first sessions is, I mean, we had some real littlies, toddlers, three, four-year-olds, yeah. and then you might have 14, 15-year-olds and speedy runners. 
and I think it, there were always enough volunteers that they, they'd thought that through and there were perhaps three groups of rough ability speed and they adapted the session mm. so that everybody was doing something that suited their mm. ability. Um, do, you, do you remember any of the early sessions, any stand out for you? Uh, I think I, I was interesting listening to um, Liz and Peter talk about the night sessions because I remember there being quite a discussion about whether to continue that and actually I think that was really huge fun for them, having the glow stick and the torches and being out at night and uh, so that I think is fairly memorable yes. I mean I think all of them just that idea of the first time they're using the, the, the bricks and getting their print and getting the print out I would say that I yes. think the kids love that they love getting their print out they seeing their time. and then divots. even doing the same course again yeah. but trying to do it faster or trying to do it backwards and getting another print out I think that pressing the button and yeah. having something to come away with is that's you know, interesting because I do recall that, that we had it wasn't all sessions but a small number of sessions where we actually didn't have a map do you remember? And they were running around a course from control to control based on a visual. They could see the next one. And the aim was to get around as fast as you could with a dibber. And that was it. And they were going up and down, you know, it was one of, yeah. one of the slope, um, Harlem Slope, was it? And, um, but it's confidence in the forest, wasn't it? Yeah, was that, was yeah. That, I think we had to, we walked it, didn't we? And we then had to memorize it and try and do it. But I think, I guess, I mean, I think that's another of the things that for us has a huge appeal is that confidence in, in the forest. I right. think we live in a very risk averse, health and safety conscious society. And I think our children have perhaps lost that ability to go and play in the woods on their own or climb trees. And I love the idea that, you know, we turn up to a forest we've never been in before. And my seven year old daughter's, you know, given a map, a compass and a whistle and off she, off she goes. And I think having that, confidence to be able to map read to feel confident in the forest on your own I mean they're just amazing skills I think to give children yeah fantastic so that was the, so the first year was a lot of fun or tearing around getting out of divers getting really simple map orientation skills I guess now we've moved to the second year and I think the program is moving on tell us a little bit about how it's evolving well, I mean I think that the second year more because we're now at the stage where we most of the time know what we're doing a bit better. <laughs> Famous um, last words. Yeah, so I yeah, get lost yeah, on yeah, that. Yeah. And I, um, I think actually going to the big events and doing, you know, progressing through the colours and, and seeing their name on a list of where they've come and what their time was. Um, and again, I think a key part for me of the success of that is how generous um, the, the people running this junior club have been with their time in terms of shadowing. Because okay. if we go to an event, we've already got more children than we've got our parents. Yes. So unless we've got somebody who will shadow one of them, or well, certainly in the early stages when they were beginning and they needed shadowing, okay. that was really useful that, to have somebody that could shadow one and Neil and I could shadow the other two. I think the thing that's even more amazing for us is when they'll shadow or, or, or scoop up the children before and after so Neil and I can then go and enjoy the run and I think the fact that that's enabled us to really get into the sport and okay. progress um, but I don't know whether we'd have got to where we've got now if people hadn't been so generous in terms of yes. either shadowing the children so we could do a course and, and then we're at the stage now where we can all do a level but when the children are now at the stage where my middle son is probably needing to do light green and the other two are moving to orange. So we're now at an, a stage of game where they need shadowing because they're moving to slightly harder courses. Mm -hmm. And in order for us to sort of enjoy some of these events, again, I think we're going to be, you know, grateful for some help shadowing so that they can make that next step. And then when they're confident like colour, we'll have a, have a world where we don't need that help. But I think having people in your club who are really... Uh, prepared to be giving up their time to help with the shadowing is a really key part. It's a really good successful. message because, you know, the thing about um, developing juniors is surely that it is a commitment to the decision for a club and, and one does need to invest time and energy and shadowing is, is another part of that. You know, a lot of volunteers are used to going to events and doing their own run. Mm -hmm. They might think you're asking the kids, how do you get on? Yeah. And talking over the map, but shadowing is another another commitment. I mean, but they your message is that they, they, they absolutely, absolutely get it. Yeah, I think, um, 
and I have to say once they come to that more colour, they don't they, they don't need that shadowing until they progress they're ready to progress to the next colour. But making each of those steps, I think having people that are preferred to really invest their time in the children in that way, mm -hmm. that that has been a really key factor for us in terms of making it an attractive entity for us in the family. Okay. Does the colour coding work for your family in terms of incenting, you know, to get to the next level? As it were, is that by like his perceived level? Definitely, yeah, definitely. Okay, yeah. okay. Because I think it gets to a stage where, so my 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 twelve year old and my seven year old, yellow is too easy for them now, but orange is there's that risk of getting lost. So they did one the other day together, and that that was fine. They got yeah. around, but then now at that stage where I, I'm not sure I'd be happy letting them off on their own. But I think if they did two or three more with a shadow, they they they, they get there. Yeah, um, yeah. Any rocky moments? Yeah. Have, you, have you had any? No, like, no. You know, I, I think um, I think some of the um, uh, you know the the, the people that the rather junior club have probably been more worried than me actually. <laughs> children, <laughs> I've always had that you know feeling that they'll they'll come you back eventually. Um, yeah. So I think they probably worry more about my children getting lost than than, than I do. But uh, you know, I I think there's always so many other Orientals. Sorry, said that. that that's not really, you know, a worry for me. And I think it's such a, I think the way the white, yellow, orange it progresses, it's such a, uh, it's just, yeah, it has. I think it's really worked for them. So I think, you know, you know when they're ready for the next mm. stage. Mm. Now, uh, one, one of the feedbacks I often hear from families is that, you know, the, the whole orienteering scene is really complicated. You know, there are events at different levels. There are, there are national, regional, local. There are terms of Vet Baker and entry forms of Fabian 4 and SNI entries, all this sort of jargon floats around. Have you felt daunted um, approaching orienteering? Do you feel that we make it too complicated? And are there things we could do better for families such as you to make it easier to just get into it? Well, I think another key, key success that, that, that Sarah have thought through very thoroughly is creating a list each term of, of suggested events. Okay. I think if you'd left it to my own devices to sort of look and try and find suitable events, I think I'd have found it confusing and overwhelming. Yeah. Um, but I think they filtered through that and said, you know, these would be good events to do. They're all within a certain geographical area. Okay. Uh, uh, with Salisbury um, and within that they've identified um, certain days where they would have one or two coaches that would be available to shadow so right. I think they've uh, I think they've that's been a key part another key part of their success is 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 um, making that less complicated and suggesting events to enter. Good stuff how, how far ahead are you planning are you planning like a month a week, a month, no, it's three term, months. Term and advance. And, 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 okay. and I think if people try to do it too short notice, other your parents will have commitments on the weekend. So yes. before each term, the club have sent us an email with the monthly training and suggested events. So all of those events go on our calendar, and obviously sometimes other things come up and take priority. But those are then in in the calendar the, the term before, so that we you know we, we work things around them. Tell me a event recently you've been to which you enjoyed. Any any, any examples? Uh... Um, we went up to yeah, well, the Sub Seven Eight Forest was was great, and that was that was really great because the Seven Eight Forest. Oh, seven eight, yeah. right, yeah. In Wiltshire, in, in, in in near Wiltshire. Yeah. Um, and I arrived at that event, and I everyone was chatting about what they're doing. And I said, oh, you know what course are you doing today? So I'm doing brown, and I either got laughed at or I had a face of complete disbelief. So the joy when I got round and didn't get lost and it was a respectful time. I, I came home and the finish with, you know, it was it was lovely. So that was good. And also that was, you know, the kids did their first as well. Is there anything that the kids pick up on your delight, on your yeah, achievement? Yeah, for sure. You know, you're a, you're a role model every day, surely. And and to see the joy of orienteering, this is where, you know, parents who are able to join it does make for a family's more difficult. And, and I think I think so many of the parents are, are absolutely loving it. I mean, we're not an exceptional family in that way. They're the seven, eight uh, events. Several of the parents were doing their first um, go at it and really enjoying it. A lot of them uh, come from the scouting, you know, they're scout leaders. And, and, and I think it's they're discovering the joy of just brilliant sport. 
Yeah, well, I've got high hopes for Sarah. I'm going to keep my eye on your kids and the other juniors from the program because I have worked with her a little bit. And there's genuine talent there, which you can go forward and really enjoy interiors. So, anyway, Polly, thank you very much Pleasure. for coming and sharing uh, a little time with us. It's a delight to hear an update on that. Um, so I'm going to hand back to um, to Liz and uh, Peter, and uh, I think it's uh, time for a, a little Q and A. If, uh, we'll take some questions. Is that right? Yep. 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 Now I'm good here. Okay. Um, Time for Q&A. Actually, I think it's time for G&T, but uh, that's beside the point. <laughs> yeah. okay. um, right. So the first, thanks so much to Polly and, and Phil for doing that, because we now, we've just relived the last year and a half, mm -hmm. which, is, which was great. Um, right, apparently there's an orienteer from Slovakia, just to say that Go was Guildford Orienteering Club, and Sio was South Yorkshire Orienteers. That's my own. I was say. SYO, South Yorkshire Orienteers. Okay, there's a question here. How do you encourage parents to help? Well, we ask them. Because um, yeah, yes. <laughs> frankly, it's their children running around. And if we say we need, we have a particular park that has two bridges and quite a, a deep river in the middle of it. And so if we say we need a couple of people who and sometimes we send the parents together so they stand and chat, that goes down well. Um, and then the chap's got his dog, so the dog gets a bit of exercise. And the parents are keen because they see their children running around. And I think, to be honest, most of us would rather be yes. marshalling a corner or helping out in some way than, than just sort of sitting there and watching you Absolutely. do that. And I think it's Absolutely. just a question of, of, of tasking you and, uh, and letting, uh, letting people know how they can. Yes, it's a question of if you know what to do, yeah. you're very willing to go and do it. And we took time out, particularly as parents started coming more frequently, to explain what the theme of the session was, yes. what we were trying yes. to do, and perhaps they could help. And they quickly picked up what it is we're trying to do, and they would effectively act as the, uh, another volunteer coach. I, th I think also that we were very clear as the children came along that we were expecting the parents to stay, but it wasn't a crash. They were expecting the parents to stay and with a view to understanding what was going on. And I think that right from the yeah. word go. We and I think we, we quickly got the idea to come in trainers so that I mean, oh, yes. I wouldn't always run, but if there were new kids uh, that needed shadowing, that you were then in, in the yes. right kit to be able to. Yes, to help. And I think the other parents have done the yeah, same thing. Yeah, absolutely. But I feel as like I don't think you ever even needed to say that. I think it just became no. obvious. Interesting, very early on in the sessions, um, we have great pictures of the uh, youth party running after two or three kids, taking part in actually in the exercise yeah. with them. It, uh, I, I don't think we needed the no. being to persuade people. I think most of the families that are involved, yeah. you, know, you know, they all enjoy those, they're running around yes. themselves. They because they're trying to run in families they anyway, don't they? Doing that I, think, I think the important part is to accept that and encourage involvement rather than try to keep parents. In any way. Indeed, indeed. Oh, well, can I read your writing You mentioned some inertia for acquiring club O kit for juniors. Did you get any other resistance from the club or parents? Um, well, no, we didn't. I think that you mentioned, I think, a sort of inertia in joining the club. I think oh, well, that's what okay. yeah, that's okay, that's that was a good point, yes. Uh, no, not what I meant by that was, um, it's very easy to say to people, just go onto the BOF website and register and join. And, it, it, and for some people, you know, finding time to do that um, was a bit of a problem. And so there were one or two families where we kept having to remind them and then almost yes. tell them exactly where to click if, and that kind of thing. Yeah. It wasn't that there, there, there was any resistance. I think it was just that finding a time. Because if they had three children, they had to enter all three. Yeah. It was just 
for sliding the tag to sit there with the yeah, Google Yeah, so when, when you send out emails um, having the exact link mm -hmm. and exactly yes. what they've got to uh, put in there, that might, might, you know, in retrospect, that might have helped them if they just had to go onto an email and click it and it was all, we'd all set it up there for them, so they, they might have found it easier. Right, now this, this next question is an interesting one because um, it's asking if we've used any of the brochure interior incentive schemes, colour-coded um, certificates, gold, silver, bronze and so forth, um, and what really incentivizes children, just to say that we're in the process of uh, using the colour-coded certificates, particularly because that's something they physically can see and fits in with the colours. What if that has, has helped your children? What is motivating well, I, them? I think they just have a genuine desire to, to do well within the colour that they're doing. And yes. they, I guess they see it as a sort of treasure hunt straight race. So A, finding the controls is, is an incentive in, it, in itself. And then, you know, where they come in that, in that, in that list. And also the incentive of moving up to the next colour code at, at events. I mean, I'm sure if we have the gold, silver, bronze scheme, that would be another... Um, that, that would yes. be another thing that they would enjoy too. Yeah, the gold, silver and bronze tends to come with the big, bigger competitions that are age mm -hmm. ratio, that's to yeah. come for them. Okay. And the other thing about the BOF incentive scheme, some of them, you only get qualification if the um, activity is registered on the BOF or the results are on the British Orienteering website, um, which is very tricky because it's actually trying to persuade the people doing the computers and the results to put results um, down to level D, let's say, because a lot of these low-key activities are level D, and there's no reason why that particular level shouldn't be added to the results on the British Orienteering website, and then it would trigger some of the British Orienteering incentive schemes, because it's not going to mean nothing to Polly if her children don't receive these things through the website, because also, of course, children don't necessarily have their own um, their own email and so forth. No, I've read it over there. Um, have their own email and so forth, so they don't get it. So it's not an easy thing to access, as I'm sure we all agree. Um, this this question asks how Sarah got on with the British with the Evette Baker Heat. I didn't mention it. They were third out of three, if you want to know. But I did say that we did. It was very good third, given that we didn't have half the colour codes co coded entries because it, it takes yellow, orange, light green, and green. And we had the yellow and the orange. And we didn't have the light green and the green, sorry. And, and, and so next, next year, we have great hopes of doing better. The main thing with that was actually getting them to come to a big competition that had that kind of big feel to it. It was just experience. It was really. experience, and we knew they wouldn't get so, so far, but we did well at the level we were at. The last, yeah, the last question is the future vision for Serum Orienteers and um, for the juniors in, in the Serum, for Serum Juniors. Interesting enough, we've just recently been talking about this. Um, we're basically going to continue with our training programs and moving them through so that they actually get a very solid grounding within the white, yellow and orange um, events with a view, and we were talking to our club coach who actually works with the Southwest Junior Squad, actually getting the youngsters into um, where possible into the Southwest Junior Squad. And if they don't get into that, we will then continue to work with those youngsters who don't do that to encourage them on into, into multi events and so forth. Um, but just giving them this basic grounding with as much training as we can, um, and also using events for a bit of training, things like aiming off and so forth, which we can't do in our local parks since they could work around those parks blindfold. There's not much point of that. But, but teaching skills is our, is our main aim, with a view to consolidating what they've been picking up and learning so far. And also, of course, as we do this, the parents are learning as well, and so we'll make fewer mistakes, which helps yeah. Polly. I, I think it's aim. interesting if it focus, yes, the uh, focus of the project was juniors, but in reality, what we wanted to achieve was families becoming involved and yes. we've done that and i think seeing families remain in the club yes uh, and from all to develop not just juniors the, uh, the parents as well and um, that's what the club needs it, it needs a nice plug of interested and active families yes. some of whom may even get onto the committee eventually and start running the club yes. themselves <laughs>
It was, and do you know, the, your annual dinner, the, I, mean, I felt that every age group was really represented. It was interesting to see, yes. you, you know, you, you really, it really does feel a very healthy balance of, of age yes. groups now within the yes. club, which is so different to what it was when Cameron first Indeed. said, can I do yes. orienteering and we, yes. we joined. That's right, yes. That's, 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 we had a table full of juniors. Right, that's... Okay, Thank well, you, Peter, for the last word. Thank you for everybody that's, uh, first of all, sent in questions and uh, sat down. I hope you didn't all fall asleep um, at once, anyway. Um, so thank you for everybody who's participated. So thanks to Polly for all her enthusiasm. And thanks to Phil. Question, you know, the, the, the Jeremy Paxman of Boff, I guess. <laughs> um, I hope you found our description of our experience useful. And encouraging. Uh, remember, this was how we addressed our particular club issues. They may not necessarily be the same for you, but if you have different ideas, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do it. You can do it. Right. Okay. Cheerio. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.